Hey fellow reefers, welcome back to the channel. This is Lee, uh, Reefer Explained. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, give me some comments, feedback just on these videos. It would really help me out uh, just going forward on what content I should be providing uh, just to help those fellow reefers and newbies that are joining the hobby. So uh, today we're going to be talking about cable management and controller boards, uh, kind of uh, where to mount all your gear, uh, what things to look out for. Um, now this is not a perfect setup for me and uh, please just take most of the things I take with a pinch of salt. Still a work in progress um, but there's lots of things to think about when you're buying a reef tank and you're going to be doing this for the first time. So um i'll just start with the sump obviously that's where everything is located on this this build um and i'll just talk you through some kind of uh things that i had uh, put in and obviously what came with the tank so let's just go back to day one when i got the tank the red sea module here for the switches um because it was an all-in-one system but this comes with it anyway uh, and then I upgraded to the sump. But this is just basically the power center to turn switches on and off, which all I've got running here is my reactor now and the lights, that's it. Because up here is the power bar um, and it's a prong system, two prong. Uh, and obviously in the UK, we take three, three plug uh, pins. Um, I've had to disconnect this kind of thing and mount it up a little bit higher. Um, just due to the fact that I am now running um, a controller board, which I'll go through in a sec. So this is a great idea in principle. Um, if you've got two prong uh, or you can change the plugs or you get the adaptive parts for that, you can plug most of the gear in here. Um, so there's uh, seven seven outlets. Um, one is for the lights though, so disconnect, so don't count that. So you've got six main plugs, I believe. That you could plug stuff into um, technically anyway, however I've gone with a, a kind of a different approach as you can see from this um, so what we have here is a uh, eight plug extension socket uh, here with some USB ports and a type C um, this has been mounted to the back of the tank with some uh, 3 ml tape very strong stuff from Amazon, uh, if you want to know where to get that from, it's kind of locking. It's a locking um, uh, pad, um, and I've attached that there. You got the main two switches here to turn one side off and another side. It's surge protected and um, fire resistant material. It's quite good. As uh, I've got it from Amazon. Um, uh, this plastic screen is basically just attached to the controller board. Um, it's just basically to stop any water splashing towards these plugs um, because I've already had an incident where a pipe a tube came out when I was cleaning and it hit here and kind of a little splash but dried it off very quickly and luckily nothing happened so lucky you lucky. Uh, okay so the controller board. So basically this is just technically uh, just a fancy board that you could buy from your aquarium uh, stores. Uh, here in the UK is Charter House Aquatics, Crack and Coral sell them. Um, this this is the Exodus Hex Dulux, um, which is retail 161.49 now. Um, I think I paid a bit more when it first came out. And there's an adaptive reef one, which is a basic model, which is 175. Now this is like the Red Sea 250, it's an E260, so slightly bigger, but I think underneath the tank, um, you can't fit this board face on because obviously the sump is here in the way. Um, so I've had to go uh, uh, this way straight in. Um, doesn't look great in my opinion because obviously not really taking a full advantage of the board from the front. However, all the power uh, modules are now connected to the face of this, which is great. Um, still got some room left on here to mount other things that I come into. I've used the cleat up here that comes with it, the wall cleat. Um, that, that holds up the unit if you want to put it on the main wall. Um, I just didn't have room to do that either. Um, so I've used this, uh, Velcroed this down basically with the 3ml and used it as a shelf to put the doser on, which I think looks pretty sweet and happy with that. Uh, just needed somewhere to put that up high. Um, all the cables come through these um, and these parts come out. They're just basically uh, like, you know, widget, widget bits. Um, it's made of like kind of just wood really, just been painted. Is it really worth the money? No, if you can get a piece of wood and get it all cut out at the local 
uh, DIY store or B&Q, then probably be worth doing that for a lot cheaper, personally, in my opinion. And then you could just put some grommets in the holes where the cables go through. So um, something to think about, um, definitely worth easily doing, um, but just, uh, just something for you there to see. Um, all the cables are all hidden behind, kind of tucked in behind the board. Um, and these, and, and obviously this main socket is my um, like controller module where all my heaters, pumps, <coughs> um, ATO, uh, UV sterilizer and things like that are running off. The lights are just running off here in the reactor, off this one, off this module. And this is coming from another socket in the room, uh, not off the main, main socket, but it's just running a little pump for the UV and my reef dose up there. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, we've got eight sockets here. One for the lights here, so we're, and and the reactor says ten, and then another two up there. It's Twelve plugs in total, um, just just to be running this reef tank, which is a bit crazy. So why wire management is um, obviously uh, you know a little bit annoying when you get all of these cables coming from all directions, from the top of the tank, all the way under, and then you got to plug them in somewhere, and then mount all of this gear in this uh, stand, which is a bit of a joke. Um, yeah so something really to think about for the future if you're going to ever get a reef tank is to plan and i thought i'd had it down but um i thought with the extension socket that they give you it would be enough and uh, um, i probably wouldn't need to do much cable management not really thinking about it clearly um but yeah uh the boards are great. If you've got the money to spend, then yeah, get an adaptive reef or the Exodus uh, Hex Dulux. Um, you know, it's a nice, nice finish. Uh, plugs everything on, and if you can have it face coming towards you, then then even better. And then you wouldn't see uh, the rest of this junk behind here. But still, it's better than it was. Um, I'm quite happy with it, it, the way it turned out in the end. Um, but there's always room for improvement, though. So um, yeah, the, the only other thing that I've done here is there's not really cable management is just, um, this is duck, uh, like, sorry, this is pond liner, um, just you can get from local fish store. I ordered it online from Amazon, um, just protects any spills, damages, or if the sump was to leak, um, I would catch it and be able to pull it out and wipe it down. So it just protects the stand from uh, basically um, coming into contact with uh, salt water and splashes. And obviously you always drop elements on here from doses and things like that. So um, I think it's a good idea to do that. And it goes pretty up high. Um, it comes all the way underneath here, all the way up to this high, just in case the skimmer went crazy and was like bubbling all over the place. So um, that was one thing that I really wanted to do um, to, to prevent any, any kind of like spills. Uh, apart from that, cable management, um, you can use some zip ties. I would suggest getting some zip ties from Amazon. They're a bit more expensive with the, they're like refuse, uh, reusable ones. Um, you can just zip in and zip out. Um, they're much better and you won't be cutting away and then throwing them, obviously, and then having to buy another bag of them. So the reusable zip ties are the best. Um, you can get this green um, stuff as well. It's like... Uh, kind of Velcro, you can buy a roll of it um, and then you can just cable them up like that so it's easy to get off and on if you wanted to use that as well. But controller boards, hex or the um, adaptive reef, um, they're great boards to have uh, if you want to show off your gear or just basically get it off the floor in case, uh, you, you know, if you left it down here and some water came over, you would end up getting all that water on, on the unit. So something to bear in mind. Um, you could have uh, put the, I did have them up here originally some of these units but I was running out of space and cables were everywhere so I think just to be um, more like safety for fires and things like that kind of like cables touching each other just keeping everything neat um, and kind of that way remember anything you need to remove you want to be able to remove it quite easily so for instance my pump down here my uh, Red Sea Reef 25 that I just put in um, when you want to disconnect it, it might be a bit of an issue but um, the the cords are just down here um, and I can just unplug them and then pull it out from the back so it's not too bad uh, just something to be mindful of guys if you're gonna get a reef tank think about cable management um, and and how you want to do that there is one thing uh, guys I wanted to say that I'd seen that was quite a good idea you've got all of this wall space um, and obviously running cables all the way around it can get, it's going to get quite messy so there is one thing i saw from ikea was these white i mean yeah if white if you have got a white tank underneath then great but they were white with um basically they were for like tools um and i think if you you could clip them or mount them to the back of this 
and then you could run the cables behind it and then um, put the put the products over the top of them uh, or underneath um, or cut the holes out. Uh, it would look pretty sweet uh, and you wouldn't see any cables at all. So something I, I found from Ikea that I should have got from the beginning, but I've just, uh, just seen it now. Guys, let me know what you think about this, if it's okay, if it looks okay, if there's anything else that you would do differently. Um, it's just running out of sockets and obviously with all the cables and all the like equipment you keep adding to these reef tanks, um, it can be quite difficult where to mount them. I don't know if anyone else is experiencing the same problem. Obviously, they probably are. But um, yeah, just leaving them on the ground is not an option for me and trying to mount them all to the back of the tank area it was uh, really difficult um, I was just running out of space crazy so the board was a good idea um, it's just quite expensive for really what it is it's just a pallet with some notches cut out of it it's a bit crazy for 170 pounds but there we go guys if you like the video if you like the content please give it a like subscribe and just uh, hit me up on any uh, information you want about this tank thank you thanks for watching take care bye